Hello and welcome back to our garden. Now, just topping up the beast. And you know, it's a really good time of the year to be getting on with composting. There's so much green about now as you're harvesting things and browns, which all serve to make great compost. Now, of course, we hot compost and then we put it into the bays over there. But regardless whether you hot compost or cold compost, one thing I do recommend at least once, and we only do ours once, is to turn your compost. As you can see, we've been making our compost over the last few months. We've got a goodly amount. It's breaking down really nicely. But just to get it all going again, it does pay you to turn the compost heap. And what's really good for this is the compost fork that I'm using at this moment. Because it does help to break everything up. When you use a normal fork, they're quite the tines are much larger and you can't quite get into it as well. Whereas these being thin tines, you can just scoop up what you want, take it over to your next bin and then you can break it up. And in our garden, it's mostly browns we scrounge from local gardeners when they've been cutting down shrubs and things, plus any of the browns that we have in the garden uh, that we've saved up from earlier in the year when we've done all the prunings. But the greens in the main do come from the grass, and we have a lot of grass that we can actually cut. And you saw me at the beginning of the video just topping the beast up with some grass and this which are some shrubs and things that, uh, let's say, a local gardener had, uh, had cut down, shredded up for us, and yet we're working our way through them. I've just put in my next order. <laughs> because what you will find is that over the next couple of three months, you will be harvesting so much that you will have an abundance of green. And that's great because you can make lots of compost, but you do need the browns to go with that in order that you make, or get the balance right, to make good compost. And I'm not too fussy about what the compost looks like so long as it spreads well onto our beds. I don't need it to be of the quality that you'd buy from a garden centre. I'm not going to be sowing seeds into it. You can see what it's looking like. It's looking good, isn't it? It is, yes. That, that is definitely the best compost we've made or managed to make before, I think. <laughs> Breaks up nicely. Yeah, there are some twigs and things still in it. I'm not bothered by that because that actually helps with the organisms that are in the soil. And we've been making this since April. April, it was April we started, wasn't it? I think it? so, yeah. But the benefit of just doing this is that you introduce more air. In the case of this, it's actually not too dry, but if it was, you could then introduce some water to it. You don't ever want to absolutely flood it. It just needs to be moist, damp. No more than that. What you'll find is that this will just begin to heat up again. It's not going to get to the temperatures that it was, but it will begin to heat up again and then it can finish its final breakdown. That was a song, wasn't it, Mrs W? <laughs> no, that was the final countdown, wasn't it? 
I'm a poet and I never even knew it. Now in today's video, we are going to be giving you our top tips for the seeds that you could be sowing in the month of August as we start to get nearer the end of what people would call the growing season. But myself and Mrs W, we had a really successful time actually growing things in the greenhouse and the polytunnel over winter. And in order that we have plants ready to go in there, that sowing is actually going to start today. Now, August usually brings us the best of weather for the year. Not really happened this year, has it, Mrs W? It's been very, very wet, hasn't it? <laughs> We've seen so much rain, which has helped the garden. Don't get me wrong, we've had an abundance of harvest. But things like the tomatoes and things, they are suffering because they're not really seeing enough sunshine. It's been really dull here in Norfolk with all the cloud and the rain that has been pouring from the sky. However, we quite prefer the temperatures like this, don't we? <laughs> I do, definitely. <laughs> August being the traditional holiday month here in the UK means that probably a lot of people are going away. And one of the things you're always going to struggle with is how do you keep the garden going? Even if you have neighbours like we have or fellow plot holders on your allotment, you know, they're probably not ever going to look after your garden as well as you look after it. So maybe we can do things to make the job easier for them. So what you can do to help things is to use upturned, well this in the case of this was a, an old lemonade bottle that we had. Cut the bottom out, use a cane and if you put the, put the first part of the uh, bottle into the ground and then put a cane in it to hold that in place. And you can do that for water loving plants that really do need the water like your tomatoes, your courgettes and such plants as that, even lettuce. The day you go on holiday you can fill that all up, let it drain away and then fill it up again. The beauty of that is that it will only take the water down as and when it requires it. In that way, your neighbours or your fellow plot holders only need to come round and just top that up every couple of days or so. The danger is they'll come along and just get the hose or your watering can, just sprinkle it over and think, yeah, job done, it's all done. But actually, very little water has got to the plants that really need it. Things like your brassicas and such like, you know, they should be fine. The established plants should be fine. Their roots should be deep enough by now in order that they can find the water that they need. But you will need to keep any recent plantings if it gets really dry and make sure they have a good drink too. Now of course for us at the moment this is not really coming into play. A because we're not going on holiday at the moment. But secondly and more importantly the weather is quite damp. We're in for another wet and windy weekend this weekend. But it's supposed to be turning a little bit drier, so they say, towards the second half of August. So depending on what your conditions are like will depend very much on what you need to do. But certainly using these upturned bottles with a cane in it really does help because it concentrates the water to the roots of this, in this case, our courgette. I notice we've got our first market more cucumber ready on the plant this side, Barry. 
on them. Have we? Yeah, right, they're sort of behind the leaf. Oh, yes. Can you see it? Yes, I can, yes. It's a bit prickly <laughs> or spiky. But that's definitely ready to harvest. If nothing else, we have a very, very good crop of cucumbers this year. <laughs> we have, haven't we? We have indeed. And actually still producing cucumbers too, which is fantastic. Right, potatoes. If they're an early main crop, such as the ones we're growing at this moment in time, this is Maris Piper. You can see that most of the leaves have gone over now. The stems are dropping off and going yellow. That means that they are actually ready now to be harvested. So if you are growing a variety like that, then you can begin to harvest your potatoes. Oh, that looks not a bad size, is it? No. Oh, nice. That's one thing the rain has done for us. Yeah. Is to help swell these potatoes and really well. Red ants nest by the looks of it. <laughs> There's a lot of red ants about this year, I've noticed. Yeah, there are, aren't there? Yeah. No. Oh, you missed one there. Yeah, that was attached to. Now, I do need to harvest these first couple of rows here at least because I need the space actually to be planting out some more plants. Looking really good. That was a very good route, that one was. It was, yeah. wasn't it? Nice. So yeah, really nice that was. And of course your harvests are going to be between things that you want to eat now and also things that you want to store. Potatoes are one of those such things, things that you want to be storing. So we tend to put ours into hessian sacks. But Paper sacks will do just as well. well. What you do want to do is, as you harvest your potatoes, try and pick a day like it is today where it's, we're going to have a little bit of sunshine and just leave them on the surface for a little while in order that they can just dry out and harden up their skins. It always seems a little bit on the difficult side, but do try to get as many out as you can. And you don't get volunteers like we had in that bed earlier, <laughs> Mrs W. <laughs> Once they've dried out, then do just check them over and make sure that there's no disease in them before you put them in the bag. Because what you would, don't want to do is for any rotting or diseased potatoes to pass that on to the rest that you're going to store. In most cases, You'll still be able to eat the potato, and I'm glad to say these don't look like there's any signs of disease on them whatsoever. You'll just be able to peel them and eat them now. That's what we tend to do. So that's all right. Lovely little harvest. Well, not a little harvest, that's a lovely harvest. Yes. yes. There shall be potatoes. <laughs> Now, I was always a little bit funny about putting potato holmes on to the compost heap. But we have done that for the last couple of three years now, and they compost down nicely. They haven't caused any of our potatoes to get blight. Hopefully you haven't seen any blight. I sincerely hope that you haven't, because that, you know, is quite a serious disease to get in your potatoes. And after all the time they've been in the ground growing, it can be annoying. Now also at this time of the year, depending on when you put your onions in, they could now be coming ready. They could be ready any time between August and September. Because of when we plant ours, I do it deliberately so that we get a harvest in July. And again, that space, you can see that our purple sprouting broccoli are in there where there was a bed of onions. But yours might now only be coming ready. Same as for me, these are ready. 
So this is another job, another thing I'm going to be harvesting, and you might find that your shallots are ready to harvest too. Which reminds me, you know, we've had nearly 3,000 views now on how to sow shallot seeds. It's been really popular, hasn't it, it over the last has. few months? People just keep clicking on it. But what I would say, from that video, you wouldn't ever have seen the harvest. But you can today. This is the result. These are the... Um, Zabrun. Zabrun. They are, Something, yes. Because we'd already harvested our Longor and... Uh, what's the other one's called? Uh, it was Longor and Jamur, wasn't Jamur, it? Jamur, that's it. We've already harvested those. Now the ones that, like, split, aren't they? Yeah. Into individual... But I have to say, I really like the look of these shallots. <laughs> this one that's just massive, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Even They're the, all a good size. Even the small to the shallots. They're as large as uh, Jumour, aren't they? Yes, yeah. Well, as it's the first time that we've actually successfully been able to grow these, I think um, we'd definitely grow them again, won't we? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. So, yeah, just pull them up. And if you live in a really dry climate, or where you're living in the UK. In fact, has anybody in the UK got nice sunny weather for the next five days? <laughs> you could just leave them on the surface to begin to dry out. But we will not be doing that. <laughs> we shall not be doing that. We will be putting them under cover. <laughs> we know there is lots of rain to come. <laughs> that's, that's the giant one, isn't it? It is. That's the giant one. Absolutely huge, isn't it? <laughs> That's going to do two meals on its own, Mrs W. Yeah. So I've been really pleased with the shallots, regardless whether they were grown from sets or these ones, which we grew from seed. And I think we're both in agreement that we're going to do this seed again next yeah, year, aren't I think we? we should. Now these will go under cover up by our compost bins where the rest of our onions are. And there they will stay under that cover until these tops and the neck have dried out so that there is no moisture. Then they can store for a long, long time. Now, my top tips and seeds that you could be sowing, and what I'll be sowing, the first one is spring onions. Now, this is right the beginning of August, and if you sow them now, hopefully you'll be able to be harvesting some before the turn of the year. But towards the end of August, if you then sow a batch, they'll grow slowly, and you'll be able to have a harvest from those next year and we've done that very successfully over the years haven't we yes yeah we have which has been really quite good and let's face it who doesn't like a spring onion but along with that my second top tip is lettuce and if you sow a hardy variety of lettuce then it will get away strongly now but then as the weather cools down as we go into autumn and head towards winter, that growth will slow down. But you'll be able to have some pickings and you'll be able to enjoy your spring onions along with your lettuce. But not only that is a Mrs W, it's a great time actually to be sowing some radish. If you can sow some radish and get those into your bare patches of ground, then you'll have lettuce and you'll have spring onions and you'll have radishes to give those salads a zing. And who doesn't fancy a nice salad on Boxing Day after all that lovely turkey on Christmas Day? Now also, it's not too late to be sowing some cauliflower that you want to harvest next year. If you sow them right at the beginning of the month, they can go in towards the end and they'll grow slowly away for you 
be able to harvest in March and April for next year. The other thing that I would highly recommend, which we weren't so successful with last year because we had a bit of a problem with uh, the uh, cabbage white actually laying eggs on those seedlings, is spring cabbage. Spring cabbage is so valuable because when we get to February, March and April, things begin to come thin on the ground. You can sow them really closely, so they're really quite tiny plants, and you can twist those out, chop them up and use them as a spring green. If you take every other one and do that and leave the other one to grow on, they'll make a small pointed cabbage, which you can then enjoy towards the back end of April and May. Something you can be sowing now that will give you a harvest very quickly actually over the next sort of eight to ten weeks is pak choy. During the summer months they really don't like the heat that much and they are very prone to bolting. In all honesty they can be very prone to bolting in September and October, we've known <laughs> that before. But if our weather is going to continue, continue to be like this, that's not going to be much of a problem because it is that heat. I remember we put some in last September, didn't we? And yeah. they were looking lovely. And all of a sudden, towards the end of September, up came the flower stalk, yeah. didn't it? But it was very they hot. All, yeah, they all came all at the same time. Yeah. And that was, yeah. yeah. And between now and sort of, you know, October, if you keep sowing four or five plants, every other week, then you'll have a continual supply. Whereas if you sow lots of them, you'll find that they will tend to run to seed and you'll lose half your crop. Far better just, you know, sowing enough that you can put five in the ground, enjoy those. Two weeks later, sow another five and then you keep the continuity going. For those of you that regularly watch our channel, you'll know that in the greenhouse, we actually grew some lovely pak choy, which we sowed mm, right at the back end of October, didn't we? Yeah. And we were enjoying that pack joy December and January. Really, really good. So we're going to try that again as well. But also, as well as the pack joy, you could be sowing Chinese cabbage. Now, we don't tend to grow that anymore. We have done in the past. But I found that it does really succumb to slug damage and it doesn't like the damp weather where we are in autumn. So we don't tend to grow that anymore. But if you have the right conditions, Chinese cabbage really is really quite lovely. It's really the last month when you can be sowing turnips. And we shall be doing exactly that. We shall multi-sow them and then they will give you a harvest actually in autumn when you really want to be adding those sort of things to your stews and casseroles. August is also the last call for Col Rabbi and we shall make a sowing of that this month and that will harvest a bit later on October, November time and we'll be able to enjoy that. And one of the things about the Col Rabbi is, is that you know when you do sow a lot of it yes it does all come ready at the same time but it freezes really well and you can take it straight out of the freezer and just drop it into your casseroles and stews and it gives you that nice cabbagey sort of taste. And then lastly, the thing that I will be doing is sowing some spinach. If you sow spinach toward the end of August, it's gone well past its time when it's going to bolt. That happens back end of June, July. It'll romp away lovely in this weather and you'll get a few picks. It'll slow down as we get towards December when the light levels are getting really low, but you'll still get a few pickings to mix with your lettuces and your radishes and your spring onions. And then it will woof once again go when we get to next spring and you'll get lots of harvest and you know, it just gives you again a fresh vegetable to be able to eat in the early part of next year. Now in the greenhouse, I did, I did say a bit early that we're expecting some much warmer weather to come in the second half of August. And as those temperatures rise, so do the pests. So do keep an eye on the black fly, the green fly. Um, a great thing that we've done in the past is to use a soapy solution 
just to spray on the back of the leaves and it will get those off. If you can see black fly or green fly on the stems, you can use your fingers just to run down the stem and take those off because they won't do your plants any good whatsoever. Now, we were just by the raised bed a little earlier, with it being the beginning of August, we shall take those tops of the tomatoes out because what's on there now is what you're going to get as the light levels diminish and the weather begins to get cooler they're going to struggle to any fruit that comes now is it's not going to turn red so pinch those out now the outdoor ones as for our indoor ones we should be doing that towards the end of the second week of august and whatever's on the plant now is what we shall have we do have quite a good crop they're just not we do. These San Marzano are looking really great. Yes, they are. Let me... Beautiful. Looky here, Mrs. W. We do rather seem to have some aubergines. We, I, think we're they're, really, I think they're, they're ready to harvest ready, now. Yeah. Yes, I, I think you're right. There's that one there, and there's one on this plant here. There I is. Lovely shape and size. And yes. I think we have one on the new variety, don't we? Yeah, where did you see that? See if you can find that for me so I can show everybody, please. This is called Violet Night, isn't it? Yes. I'm, we're quite intrigued by this, aren't we? Yeah, that we are. That we are. Just see what it is like. <laughs> now, the peppers, they're still doing really well. They're all starting to ripen now, especially the plants that we This one at the end here has got so many fruits on. Like when I came in earlier, it was uh, one of the branches was bowing over, so I've... I've tied it up and hopefully it's going to be okay but there's so many fruits on it there are there are and i'm hoping that these plants here too that you sowed earlier because I mean, some lovely peppers that's on a, there that's a beautiful pepper, isn't it? so hopefully yeah that will eventually ripen up this one this is the new fantasia this was wasn't it yes and they are a much paler green to start off with aren't they and yeah don't know what that one's going to be like but the plant is looking healthy so that's good yeah and we are still having many cucumbers even though the red spider mite is doing its utmost to annoy them it really is we isn't are it? still getting a good harvest of cucumbers I think there's another one or two on there now that he's harvesting it really is now looky here mrs w we've got some potatoes coming through do you know i i watered these yesterday because i thought where they are that's a bit sheltered behind the greenhouse and maybe they weren't getting a lot of water and there was nothing here yesterday they've just poked through today yeah and there's another, another little one, one come through, there, through there they're the maris pier aren't they they're the maris Have pier yet? haven't seen any charlotte through yet but no. i can see there's some sort of ground movement yet or some soil starting to uh, crack so i'm sure they'll be through really really soon yeah brilliant Christmas new potatoes. Lovely. That was our top tips for seeds to be sowing in August. Some that you'll get harvest from in a few weeks' time, and some that you're going to get harvest from later on in the year and into next year. If you like what we do, then please subscribe to our channel. We would love you to be a part of our journey. Now, I do keep hinting about plot five, and things are going to be happening. There's going to be some big changes up there. Well, in about three weeks time, we have some very special people coming to visit the New Dig Norfolk Gardener. And then all shall be revealed. Do have a great gardening week and we shall see you on the next one.